people who spend a lot of time in seclusion, what's the creepiest thing you've experienced? On a two-week solo backpacking trip I had four days in seclusion between ranger station check-ins. On the first day of the seclusion, I felt like I was being stalked. As I lay in my tent that night I could hear what sounded to me like footsteps around my camp but never coming too close. In the morning I checked all around and found no evidence of footprints or having any wildlife around me. I broke down camp and took off trying to put it behind me. The second night was the same thing. I grew so paranoid that when I would hike during the day I would go over rocks, walk through streams, anything to try and break the trail so I couldn't be tracked. I'd go around a blind turn and then sit there for an hour waiting to see if something would come behind. At night I couldn't sleep for more than 10-15 minutes before waking up. Finally I got to the ranger station check-in and told them what I had been experiencing. I went and set up camp as close to the station as I could. Later the rangers, they offered for me to sleep on their couch for comfort and so I could actually sleep. I accepted and stayed the night indoors. I walked out to my camp in the morning and it had been destroyed. My tent was cut on the side, sleeping bag ripped and backpack turned inside out. The rangers came and reported it, took pictures and everything. I ended up getting one of the rangers to give me a ride back to base camp and going home the next day. I used to work for the US Forest Service and sometimes worked with an older gentleman that had lots of interesting stories from his many years of life. But by far the most chilling tale was from when he was working in a very secluded area of wilderness and was walking through the forest when a thunderstorm hit. He had seen an opening in the hill a little while back and headed to it to take shelter. Once inside he shined his flashlight to check he wasn't going to wake up a bear or something and found the skeleton of a man, sitting in a lawn chair, with a rifle rigged up so he had been able to shoot himself. The skeleton was still wearing jeans and a flannel shirt. I was on aid the bow of a sailboat crossing the Atlantic in pretty heavy winds, going about 15 knots. Crew had to be stationed alone on the bow in two-hour shifts at all times, keeping an eye out for anything in the water. About 10 meters away from me I see a weird glint in the water. Then I realize it's a partially submerged shipping container. Before I had time to even open my mouth, we passed it by, missing it by a few feet. And that's the story of how I nearly got shipwrecked in a storm in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. When I was a scout in Iraq, I was setting up a concealed observation post when we saw the largest cat through our thermals. Like lion slash cheetah slash leopard. The thermals were fuzzy, but we could identify size based on distance with the laser range finder. The thing is all three of those animals used to live in Iraq but they have been long since extinct in the area. Driving through the middle of Montana one night, going about 100 miles per hour, past something on the side of the interstate that looks like a mangled body. Turned around at the next pass, came back. Definitely a body. Put my lights on it and tried to call 911 on my cell. No reception. Got in the car to see if I could pick up cell reception, lights were still on, looked back, nothing there but the blood splatters. Drove away pretty quickly. I was on an outward bound trip in the White River National Forest in Colorado. A part of OB trips is a solo, which can be anywhere from 12 to 48 hours in which the participants are by themselves with a journal and some snacks. I set up a sweet tent in a tree grouping. It had rained the night before so the ground was pretty soft. After setting up I walked around the area. I felt pretty tired, and decided to take a nap. For 8 hours. I woke up in the middle of the night to a bunch of twigs cracking. It turned on my torch to look to see if it was the instructors or any kind of animal. I even called out, hey, you good? Not sure why I said it that way. Nothing. In the morning I found some big cat tracks right by my tent that were not there when I took my nap. It was really unnerving knowing that a mountain lion was near me when I was sleeping. I told the guides about it and they got really particular about keeping our food away from where we were sleeping. More mysterious than creepy. We were camping in Montana near Yellowstone Park in a small campground. It was the off-season and there were maybe five other people there, including a couple three to four spots down who had a large dog with them in their RV. I walked by and the dog was friendly so I petted it and talked to it and went on my way. Later that night I am sitting watching the sunset and reading on my Kindle when a cold nose bumps up under my arm, like dog does when it wants attention. I figured it was the dog and started scratching its head. Before I could look around, my friend came around the corner and froze with a look of fright on his face. I was scratching the head of a pretty big gray wolf. I had no idea what to do, I didn't want to keep touching it but I didn't want to stop and piss it off either. 
I scratched for maybe 5 to 10 more seconds and it just looked at me like thanks, bro and walked off into the woods. We went to a hotel that night. I camped by myself in northern Minnesota by boat. Found my spot but saw an unidentifiable creepy blob underwater. Set up my tent etc. Went fishing but curiosity lead me to the blob again and I finally figured out it was a large dead deer contorted and missing its abdomen. Later I noticed bark scraped off a tree about 8 feet up. I was a forest fire lookout in the summers during college. Went weeks between seeing another human sometimes. Some of the things I witnessed or heard while doing that job are just flat unexplained. The one that most sticks out in my mind was laying in bed and watching a strange light move through the trees. Figured it was a car with headlights in until it went vertical up into the air and hung for 30 minutes just sitting 20 to 30 miles away, about parallel with my tower. I was at an elevation of 7,000 feet I watched it until it dipped back below the trees and never saw it again. At the time I was super creeped out, but chalked it up to the another one of those dozens of things I've seen that I couldn't explain and no one would believe. But the next day another lookout called me on the radio asking if I'd seen the same light. He was much closer to but on the other side of it. He said from his perspective, after it dipped below the trees, it landed in an area he knew to be a lake that was only accessible by hiking or horseback. When I was maybe 14 I lived in a rural area of the BC interior. As young teens do, I got bored easily in my small town. To alleviate my boredom, my friends and I would routinely explore the surrounding areas, and go on long day hikes. There are instances I can remember being very creeped out on our expeditions. The first time was in the summer, my two friends and I decided to do a hike across several dozen kilometers. We of course prepared adequately, as any group of 14-year-olds would. We had water, and a bag of jerky between the three of us. Naturally, we got very hungry as the jerky quickly ran out. To combat this, we decided to cut through the back roads, and farmland so we could get to the highway faster, and thus lead to food. After about an hour of hungry hiking we came upon a little village that was all gated up, and surrounded by brambles. This itself isn't too creepy. What was creepy was the fact that just inside the gate was a mountain of cattle skeletons and corpses. There seriously would have had to have been three dozen bodies in the pile. As kids, we were sufficiently spooked. I was in the Up Michigan about 20 minutes outside Escanaba with my GF at the time and her family. On the way to her grandparents we passed by this long abandoned house. I wanted to stop and get a picture and explore. She wanted nothing to do with it so I went in alone. I spent maybe 15 minutes rummaging around the fossils of someone's life and then poked my head out the top window. She snapped a photo and said, can we GTFO of here now? I went downstairs and I noticed a door I missed earlier. I opened it and the dim ambient light spilled down the first two steps into the cellar. Everything else wasn't black exactly but more like the complete absence of everything. My hair stood up and every cell in my body screamed at me to gently close the door, leave, and never come back there again. I live near the criminally underrated Northwoods of Maine. The creepiest thing I've seen out there is lights. Lights in the woods at night. On two occasions me and a friend approached them, they vanished when we got close. It was way off trail, in the middle of nowhere. No one had any business being out there at night. I was hiking through the remnants of a remote, long abandoned town in the surrounding area. To get to as far into the woods as I was, you had to cross fallen trees over a creek three times. I had just crossed the third bridge and was about five miles in and something blue caught my eye just ahead of me. There was a man, in his 60s at least, wearing blue satin pajamas, sitting in a tree. The closer I got to him the louder he laughed, it wasn't a maniacal laugh, but it set off all the alarms in my head nevertheless. He also wasn't wearing any shoes and looked well groomed slash cleaned. I gave him a friendly nod as I passed and he just kept laughing. Then it stopped. I turned and he was gone. There was no branch cracking, plants rustling, nothing. He was just gone. Still rubs me the wrong way. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.